Hey everyone, we're here changing a turbo. A pretty easy job if you can't do it in an hour or two. Oh, you know, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> now, there's a little bit involved. Seems pretty straightforward. But, um, yeah, I, I did that previous video. Hopefully it comes out in the right order how to change a turbo without any waffle. Hopefully you found that amusing for five minutes. But uh, I did point out without any waffle what needs to be done now. How about we do it with a bit of waffle, right? So you can see in the other video, pretty much was removing all the other stuff around the top, you know, an hour or two mucking around, getting all this, that, and the other plugs off without breaking them, and hoses and clamps and blah, 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 blah bing and butter boom and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, basically, so what was left is all the uh, nuts and bolts, all the heavy stuff. So we'll show you the turbo on the bench. We've got a turbo playlist, like a BFE playlist, an injector playlist, and all that sort of stuff. So check out the playlists. There's more info in the other videos, but I'll give you what I can, right? So one of the hard parts is, so you've got to get the dump pipe off the back of the turbo. Those three bolts, they can be rusty. They can be a pain. Either way, they're going to be tight. You've got the bracket on the bottom of the turbo. You know, a few bolts going on there. Same thing. They can be, either way, they're going to be tight. They're going to be hard. It's just how hard. You've really got to choose to um, use the right tools the first time. And, you know, it comes with experience, what works, what doesn't, what quality tools, that sort of thing. But basically what you're left with is the three bolts joining it at the top of the manifold, um, the bracket at the bottom, uh, you've got the uh, oil and the coolant pipe, stuff like that as well. And once you've got everything undone, and at the moment it looks to me like everything underneath is uh, being removed that needs to be removed, might be a bit hard. Let me see if I can get this light on and we'll get up a bit closer. Since we've got the light shining up from uh, the other end, it wasn't really working out. So yeah, those three bolts on the back of the turbo there, this one's been changed as a bit of prevention. We've got to have a look at it yet. Um, it's had a couple of code, turbo codes, whatever. So this might be a good cheap turbo for someone. Just stay tuned on the videos because things might come up. Cheap turbos, cheap rate. A lot of things have been changed as prevention. Okay, so the pipe that goes from under the turbo to the block, you can see has been removed. I can't even get, hardly get the camera in there. It's really hard. That's obviously the oil return because it goes back to the block. So, you know, all pressure into the turbo and then it drains back into the block you see it goes into there right makes sense um the bracket it normally bolts on just about there somewhere as well um onto the bottom of the turbo where this time see the bolt came out it was all pretty you can see it needed spraying it needed work i'm not saying it's easy none of this is a fun job it's not easy but once it's got to this stage so you start at the top you get everything out of the way um and then you come underneath get your dump exhaust off dump pipe off and uh those brackets, those oil tubes, coolant tubes, so anything that's in the way. Obviously, it's pretty straightforward. Have a look around, see what's around it. Then back to the top to take those bolts off the manifold. You can see the bottom of one of them, middle of the picture about now. Okay, so one hole through access through the manifold. So, you know, that's if you're going to have a crack at it yourself, it's a fun job. I'm not recommending you do, but if you want to save money, by all means, um, have a crack. It's a way to do it. No secrets here. Mate, I'll tell you whatever you want to know about it um, and exactly how it is. It's going to take you, uh, I'd probably allocate, somebody else did their own. It took him a couple of days, I think. I think he's working on it for a few weeks, I don't know. can't remember. So, you know, it depends on your experience level and how handy you are with the tools. But I would say if it goes to plan, you should probably allow at least a day. Um, it takes us usually more than half a day, you know. It could be a mid-afternoon job, but if there's complications, it can go into the second day. Rusty nuts and bolts, dramas, getting things out, all that sort of thing. It's one of those jobs that can go pear-shaped. So not a bad idea to take it to someone that's got some experience and equipment that can, you know, deal with if it does go pear-shaped. But, um, all right, when, it, when the car's down, we lift it out. We'll uh, maybe try and show you how we're going to lift it out. We'll see how we go. It's hard to video these things. How you meant to hold a camera and get tools up in here and do this sort of thing. So, yeah, so yeah. these ones are 270,000 Ks. They came off, but you can see... They're on the edge of not happy Jan, you know what I mean? Um, so it's going to get new nuts. We keep those in stock. Uh, this one's not bad, but we'll just put new ones. We'll keep these for spares for one day when we haven't got new ones. This one, not so good either. That's what I mean. They're really tight. You're in small areas. You've got to use smaller than ideal tools sometimes, and you still need max pressure. So it's just, it is a drama. So Because some people I know, they're going to go, oh, you look at that one and you go, the socket, the socket wasn't fully on properly, correct, okay? 
but it's just not that easy, you know. When you have a crack, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> this is that oil return pipe that we were pointing out before. So, you know, bada bing, you know how it works. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? We don't need to go into that. Obviously, this one is oil pressure from the vehicle in. And then this big tube is the one that drains out back to the block. Obvious? Not obvious? Let me know in the comments. I would have thought it's obvious. It's obvious now, though, isn't it? Um, you're going to get all new gaskets, all, the, all cleaned up, and all these gaskets will be replaced. Thank you, Dake. So a bit more info for you. We've got the new turbo here on the bench. Components changed over. We're into the turbo gasket kit. There's the part number in case that's helpful for you. Um, I'm going to have a look at this thing and see what we can see. But, um, that, you know, it's just got a intermittent code a couple of times every now and then, whatever. So the new nuts that will be going on. Give you the part number for those if I can find it. I think, look, there's a couple of different nuts, so I could be wrong, but there's one of the part numbers. I think that's it. Okay, but because uh, there's those three nuts and there's another, there's a separate nut as well. I haven't got that out yet. We might not replace that one. We'll have a look at it. But I want to show you these hoses as well. There's one of the numbers. This is the 150 Prada. There's one of the little hoses. That's the little straight one. I think it's the same on the 120 as well. Could be wrong. And here's the other hose, Prado 150. All right, now if you have a look at the turbo underneath here, this is that, that straight looking one. That's that one if you wanted to change it while you're at it. This long one here is the one we haven't got, but there's another short one underneath that one there. You can basically see the whole hose. I believe that's that one there. Okay, so we've got a few spares here and we're gonna increase that. We'll have this hose as well. I haven't personally seen an issue, but I'm concerned that if there was going to be a problem with the hose, it's going to be the ones next to the hot exhaust. But, you know, never seen a problem with one. So, you know, it's not painting state like a lot of these things. It's just thinking outside the square, trying to work out what might happen next, being prepared for it. It doesn't mean everybody's got to get this hose and go and replace it because if they never going to leak, but we've just got to think about it. We've got to have it in stock. So if it does happen, Butter bing, there it is, and we can sort it out for you if someone's got one, you know, because these sorts of things they often don't have in stock, and it's, you know, Japan and weeks and all that sort of thing. So um, nice, fresh, genuine turbo. We keep them in stock. It's the only thing we're going to bolt on your vehicle if you need one. So you know the deal Monday mornings, but like I've said, depends when this video comes out. Always check the Prada Hospital Facebook page. If you're in Australia, I can help you out with parts. But if you're uh, outside, I, I can't. I'm flat out just doing Australia. So, butter bing. So, let me know. How's it going for you so far? Is it better with some waffle? Or do you like the silent video with the silent treatment? Just saying, take that off there and do that. And make sure you do that first. Otherwise, that'll get caught up there and all that. Yeah, that wasn't the best video, was it? Okay, so a new gasket ready to go. Manifold stays on. Compressor's out of the way just for access room to get out there. How'd you go? Did you have much trouble squeezing through? Nice and easy like that. Yeah, piece of cake. Yeah, that's what you want. You want it nice and easy. You know, a couple of clamps and things. You get out, you just get things out of the way so that whew, access, right? Bloody beautiful. Look at that, right? So that's what's left behind. Um, and it'll get a nice clean up at the end. All right, we've got work to do here, you know. We can't keep doing video chit chat on bloody how to change turbos and whatever. Um, a few things to fix up and tidy up here. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's all finished. It's all okay, everybody, because it's all finished. Everything's back together. This injectors have been replaced. It's everything out of the top that matters. Turbo. It's everything over this side that matters. All back together. And of course, the BFE job. That's everything on the front that matters. And uh, it's going to be a nice zero out thing, if you know what I mean. Nice and clean, zeroed out. And as you can see, this is the way the map filter sits with the black to the top on the 1KD FTV and the 1GD FTVs. Again, black. There's some different ones with white and purple. The 1KZ's got the purple one. The High Ace and some of the early Hiluxes have got the white one. Um, so yeah, look at this. Bloody beautiful. Nice car, isn't it? Nice engine. Last of the best, 2015 1KD FTV. And that's the final video, including this vehicle. And it could be the final vehicle video for a while. You just never really know what the next video is gonna be. One of the things I pointed out on this one was 
See, like always, see at the EGR valve, those the corrugated split tubing rubbing on the EGR valve. I guarantee you, right? Have a closer look at that. In time, that will do some damage, whatever. Right? See it rubbing away on that plug there. Right? That's what I picked out when it came in. So someone needs to and i've said it in a lot of videos before so i'm going to say it again in this video and that is another one of the reasons why you need to watch all the videos including the ones you missed all the way to the end over time it's only 10 minutes a day these videos so if you've missed a few you can make it up with two or three a day late at night instead of watching rubbish on the tv electronic income reducer just pop on full before diesel and get yourself educated and avoid so many things so many ways you can save money anyway that's this video and we'll catch you on the next one see ya